Hi folks, I've actually made several videos in my channel about how to use a barcode scanner using QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum. However, I actually got a client using a barcode scanner using QuickBooks Pro, right? And uh, QuickBooks Pro technically doesn't support barcode scanning. However, it could technically work in a very limited fashion. And I would like to discuss in this video how would you go about using a barcode scanner using QuickBooks Pro or QuickBooks Premier, which are not meant to be using barcode scanners. As I mentioned before, you must be working on QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum Edition to properly use barcode scanners. Anyway, so one thing to think about is I'm using a barcode scanner I bought in Amazon for like 40 something dollars or $50. This is a wireless Bluetooth barcode scanner. I'll put a link in the description below. It's really, really cool. It works on a PC. It works on a Mac. Um, it, um, it's not a wireless computer by itself. It's basically a, uh, still a Bluetooth item. So it needs to be within 20 or 30 feet of the computer that you're working off at most. Now I'm working on QuickBooks uh, Pro right now, QuickBooks Pro 2016. I'm going to go into my item list here. And I'm just going to double click on any of the items that are there now. And just to show you, there's no field anywhere to put a barcode number. And that's because QuickBooks Pro doesn't support uh, barcodes. However, I'm going to show you how you could possibly use it. I'm going to go to a list item list and I'm going to create a new item. So I'm just going to go to new item. And I have a couple of books here on my desk that I'll be using to, um, to, uh, to, to use the barcode with. So this book is called Pricing Value. So I'm going to put an inventory part. I'll type here, Pricing Value. And to be clear, that's the name of the book or the name of the item that I will be selling. And because I don't have QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum and I use Impro instead, I actually cannot use my proper item name where it says item name or number. So where normally I'm used to putting the item name, I can't do that. So I'm gonna put, have to put the item name in the description, purchase and sales, and possibly under manufacturers part number two. So I wanna put the description as many places as possible because on the item name, that's where I'm gonna put the actual number as the item name. So I'm gonna take my barcode scanner. You can have a wired USB barcode scanner as well. You don't have to use a, a Bluetooth one. And I'm just gonna scan here. And then the minute I scan, the number gets loaded where it says item name and number. Now, one thing I want to mention here is when I scan the number, that screen didn't close. Normally, if you don't, don't do one particular setting, you're going to get that screen closed on you automatically when you scan the number. So I'm going to cover that in a little bit. So here under cost, I'm going to put here $20 and under sales price, we'll put uh, 40. Let's say that's how much they sell for. And we'll send this to our landscaping services income account, whatever. I know this is not the right Example, that should go under a book sales type of account. So that's it. The item name has to be the actual barcode number. And then you will have the, the actual name of the, uh, of the product somewhere in the description or the manufacturer's part number so you can make sense of it. So I'm going to click OK here. And then here in my item list, I'm going to right click somewhere and I'm going to click on customize columns. I'm going to bring over my manufacturer's part number here, which is the MPN. Bring that over. I'm going to put that next to the item name. And then I'm also going to bring my purchase description, bring that over as well. So I got my uh, manufacturer's part number, sales description, purchase description. And the reason why I'm bringing them all is just to illustrate depending on where you're going to be using that full description because you can't use the actual item name. That's a couple of options you have to be able to identify those. So let me go to the next item here, which is called Profit Beyond Measure. So I'm going to right click the current one, click on duplicate item. I'm going to delete the item name and number, scan the new one. And on the manufacturer's part number, type there profit beyond measure. And then just to kind of keep it consistent, I'm going to copy and paste that into the purchase description and the sales description as well. Let's say this is 15 cost and 30 for sales price. Click OK. And I got one more book here in front of me. So I'm going to right click, duplicate the item, scan the barcode, perfect. And this one is called Outperform. So I'm going to type there, Outperform. Okay, so I just got a couple books here from my library. <laughs> 
so I can use uh, the barcodes for the example. Let's say this one is $12 and then uh, $24. Perfect. And I'm going to click OK. So good. Perfect. I got my three items in which the actual barcode number that's in here, the actual number that you see in the barcode itself essentially becomes the item name. And then I'm using the other fields for the description. Now, I mentioned earlier there's a specific setting that you have to turn on. I'm going to go to, into Edit Preferences, and we're going to go into General, and then under the My Preferences, and this is really important. you got to click on this one that says Press Enter Move Between Fields. You have to check that. And the reason why you have to check that is because uh, most barcode scanners or barcodes in general uh, kind of submit like an Enter button at the end when it gets scanned. This is to tell the computer, hey, this is the end of the number sequence. The problem is in QuickBooks, enter means OK or save. So it ends up closing abruptly whatever you're working on. So you need QuickBooks to kind of override that enter with a tab, per se. And that's exactly what we're doing with that setting. Now, how we would do this in a, in a regular transaction, let's go to vendors and let's go to, let's say, receive items. And I'm going to pick a... Any vendor here random, doesn't matter. Maximize that. I'm going to go, I'm going to move my uh, cursor over to the first item box. I'm going to scan that. Okay. And that gets read in there, right? Because that's the item name. And then I'll put here, let's say 500, move it to the side. And then I'm going to go to the next one, scan that. And then put here, let's say 200 books. And then get the next one and scan it. And let's put here 150 books. Now, the difference between using QuickBooks Enterprise, which is a proper software for barcode scanning, is with QuickBooks Enterprise, you can scan it multiple times. And every time you scan it, it does the count for you. In this particular case, because we're sort of overriding it, this is kind of a workaround, you can only use the barcode scanner to select the item. And then you have to put the numerical count manually. So you couldn't use this to scan a couple of times and get the full count, the way a barcode scanner, it's meant to be used. So that's how it's very limited. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and close. And let's go ahead and let's sell, sell some. So I'm gonna go to um, customers and let's do a, a sales receipt, for example. And then I'll pick one of my customers here. And then let's go for the first item. Let's say he wants to fight, buy five of these. Scan that once and then I'll put five. And then I go to the next one, select I have to manually select the next box, scan it, and let's say he wants seven of these, and we put uh, seven. Now, this template doesn't contain quantity, so let me switch that for a second here. One that contains the quantity, so the first one was, I forgot what the number was, seven, and let's say five, okay? So again, I can't scan it multiple times to get multiple quantities, that because QuickBooks Pro or QuickBooks Premier doesn't support barcode, barcode scanners built in, but it works for a general um, import, in, 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 for an input. In, in, in essence, the barcode scanner is basically a glorified keyboard. That's basically the function that it serves because I could manually type in the number manually in my, in my keyboard and select uh, the item also by just uh, typing the number in there. So that's basically just an important lesson on how you would use uh, a barcode scanner. So beyond... A, uh, a glorified keyboard type of scenario. That's all it would do. However, one thing I do, uh, I, I do want to mention is if you do track serial numbers, and again, if you're using Pro and Premiere, and I'm just going to clear this for a second, and let's say uh, some of the, our, my products have serial numbers. So I'm going to pick a customer here, and then I'm going to pick an item. I'm going to pick a different item. Let's say a regular item that doesn't have a barcode in the item itself. So I'm going to pick, let's say, this item, the sprinkler head. And let's say we're going to go ahead and let me change the template to the one that contains the item. And let's say this is one and this is, uh, let's say, $500. And let's say I do track these by a serial number so I can manually enter a serial number in the description. So I can put an S slash N colon. And then I grab my serial number from the product, whatever it happens to be. I can scan it. Okay. And the serial number loads in there. And again, if you happen to have a serial number in a scannable uh, format, in an actual, with like a, with like a barcode uh, label on it, you can scan that in there and essentially track for informational purposes 
those serial numbers in the transactions. Then I can go in, and again, this is not a true serial number tracker, but if I go into edit and click on uh, find, and then I'm gonna click on advance, and then I'm gonna search in the memo field, and I just uh, scan that serial number or type it in by hand, and then do a find, I'll be able to find the specific transaction that contained that serial number, double click on that, and I can open the transaction again. So again, these are all workarounds. QuickBooks Pro or QuickBooks Premier doesn't um, track uh, barcodes or serial numbers, but you can essentially use a barcode scanner as a glorified keyboard that can uh, scan actual barcode, lab uh, barcode labels in your products, whether it's on the item name or uh, on a serial number that you're going to enter in the description itself. Uh, so anyway, I hope that was useful. Again, if you if you need true barcode support, you need to upgrade to Enterprise, and I'll put a link to a couple of videos I've done specifically on Enterprise. Uh, however, if this works for you, then there you go. That should work just as well. All right, thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.